Hey, what's going on, guys? Hex Competitive back in today. It's a brand new video. And Gotta High School episode two was phenomenal. And let me explain why. We're hopping right into it. And we're going to talk about these fighting scenes and not even for the animation. What this show just did is what shows try to do with characters they have had for multiple episodes and even multiple seasons sometimes. Kakashi and Obito. Look how long it really told you to tell a story about Kakashi and Obito. It, I mean, and Kakashi in general, since he is throughout the Naruto storyline in its entirety, pretty much. So what this show actually did with its fight scene was tell you who these people were and what their integrity was based off of their fights and the fighting style in which they use. So what I'm getting at is Taekwondo, for example, um, Mori Mor Jin, he's a person that fights with Taekwondo. But he also uses punches in which don't only apply to the body, which if you look up to about Taekwondo, there is punches in it, but only to the body. As to where you see him clearly hit the other person in the face. So he, you know he has a hybrid martial arts. You know that he is someone who is diverse in his martial arts. He adds stuff to it. He really kind of makes it his own-esque. So let's take a look at the guy that knows Tai Chi that was fighting the um, criminal in this episode. He's someone who fights a Tai Chi, yin and yang. It's about calm, cool collectiveness. What kind of persona has he displayed? They display the, the persona in which their fighting style, well, says is the right direction to go. And he's a monk. He believes in morals. He believes in the integrity. And he believes in cool calmness. So we see that he actually calls out the guy, the, the guy from jail. He says... Nah, you're a disgrace. You, have, you are great at martial arts, and I get that. I respect that. I understand that. But you're a disgrace because you disrespect the arts and what they stand for. But then, lo and behold, you notice that his fighting style is northern you know, taekwondo, which that is a fighting style that derives from war. It, it, anything goes, anything to win, anything to survive. Only the strongest will survive. And then that plays directly into the character's well, little flashback they gave us of him being weak, him being the one begging for forgiveness, him being the one looking for power. And it showcases how he was weak and he doesn't want to go back there and how he knows the weak are viewed. Basically, intimidation has changed his mindset. And I love that. That that I know the character. I, I get it. And it was just through a fight, a fighting scene and what that fighting scene and, and or fighting style stood for in real life culture that's a good storyline that's a good way to characterize characters i that's genius it's just it's just so good it's so good and of course you see jen who fights once again with taekwondo and you all see his reaction you see how he you know came to the side of the other character, but I think that also just speaks of who Jin is in general. The triple kicks remind me of the Ronin Kenshin, was it, nine slashes in like a second. That, that's, what, that's what that reminded me of. Whenever the show wanted to do animation, it did animation in this brilliant hand-to-hand -hand combat. The whole yin and yang symbol, whenever the guy who uses Tai Chi uses that ability was awesome. Seeing that not, you know, seeing the whole darkness of this episode even with the arms being of course you you saw you saw what i saw we don't need to go into that that was i was like oh ah like so disturbing it, it that but it made that scene so good it set that tone it allowed more to get that ultimate you know time to shine not many shows can make me say yes yes and scream in the second episode and saying kick that dude's ass that's not typically what i'm able to see so Seeing that they are characterizing the characters and we're giving them characterization through the way in which they fight and how it correlates to real life law, like underneath that fighting style and over that code, of, you know, that fighting style's code of conduct. That's cool. It, it really did a great job today. But speaking of, you know, things character, characterizing the characters, I always hate saying that characterizing the characters. Um, let's take a look at some characterization that was given off the battlefield. Let's take a look at Han and Mira. So that scene was one awesome for the music. And I love the way the water looked in that scene. I really did enjoy that a lot. But um, looking at that scene, you clearly see that Han in her uh, Dawe is fighting for, I believe it was his mother who's in the hospital. He needs mother, you know, he needs his money for his mother's surgeries and care, probably. That's what I would ult ultimately imagine. We take a look at someone like Mira. Mira's fighting for her dojo. She's fighting for someone strong to be the successor of her family name in order to to 
revive you know revive that said dojo so she wants successors she wants money all these kind of things so one thing i do would I really want to go on a tangent with mira is it seems as if she is a product of she said her late father and in the ed it looks like it's it didn't look like her dad that must be your grandpa or something but looking at what was in the the uh, actual scene and the dialogue that was there for mira's character she is being driven by someone else's someone else's probably pride someone else's ego and someone else's excuse me her father's <laughs> but uh, <laughs> i guess i was just being nice but it seems as if it's not necessarily what she wants in this in this scenario it seems as if there's a little something more to dive into there and i'm all for that i cannot wait to get into that but han we've seen this before in a few shows i'm trying to think of the actual shows i need my list in front of me in order to remember but we've seen that kind of Hey, I'm fighting for money for my family's treatment. Uta Rock is a very similar character in that sense for My Hero Academia. It's not about treating the people, but it's just, you know, because they need the money. They're poor. They don't have what it what they need in order to actually give that person the care in which they need. But this whole episode, though, was just building characters, giving us great animation, and the stories did tell a fight. It told you who these people were as people and why they why they are fighting, why they fight the way they do, and how they are the same, and how their fighting style correlates to who they are off the battlefield as well. But other than that, though, this show actually had something that did pique my interest, and I really didn't want to talk to you guys about this. Those whole nanobots thing, things, I feel as if these these nanobots or whatever that are inside them are going to be something that's used against them later on. I mean, it just seems, I don't know. It just seems like, Hey, you're going to act up. We're going to use these nanobots in order to control you. Now I would love for that not to be necessarily the answer in, and in, in or a problem because it just seems too meh to me if that, if that, if that is an issue, but uh, I don't know. I'm really wondering how you guys actually view that. Do you think if they went down the route to where, oh, we have the nanobots inside, inside of you while you're trying to rebel and finding out our secrets, screw you, we're going to use them against you so you can't move and control your body. Would you find that cliche? Would you find that just kind of, I don't know, lack of, I don't know anticlimactic in a way or do you think they're not going to go that route i'm interested i'm curious because i just think this is something that could happen way off in the future maybe like a season two or something maybe in the end of season one i don't know but i did really actually want to genuinely bring this to your guys's attention but uh other than that though looking actually at my notes to the left here i think i pretty much covered everything i really wanted to but i did want to also say not only in the opening it's crunchyroll on the arena it's even on the arena in the show so that really piques my interest and I, it really does once again showcase how hard they're pushing us because i didn't see any crunch crunchyroll labels in the actual episodes of tower of god and i did not hear that glepner had any either i think was it called even a man wall if it wasn't whatever but tower god was i know for a fact so i didn't see that so it shows you how hard once again crunch is pushing this it's not just in the opening now it's literally on the battlefield it's on the side of the arena in which we're going to be well what's this show is currently themed around so yeah it, it really showcased and once again some of these characters were side characters dude that they're building up i'm so impressed like that monk guy isn't some main character, but yet we learned about him. We didn't know necessarily visually see how he grew up, but the image, the self, you know, the self imagery is clearly in your head. He was calm, cool, collective, really responsible kid. Didn't get in trouble. Um, had people, older people, probably looking out for him and teaching him the ways of um, his moral compass. And that's how his moral compass is probably most likely so sound. And maybe he's even too nice to, you know, to a fault as to where we see he almost gets kicked in the face. So. Yeah, but great episode, man. I, I was impressed with the characterization in this episode and how the martial arts styles are portrayed so, you know, accurately and how the real life references of like the code of conduct behind these kind of code of conduct behind these kind of styles represents their moral compass on well, in the show in general. So really cool stuff. And ah, man. Other than that, though, guys, I'm going to end the video here. I'm not going to keep rambling for you. But other than that, though, guys, be sure to leave um, a like, comment, subscribe, follow me to our Axe 25. And, yeah, with that being said, I'll see you guys later. Peace. Thanks for watching so much.